Joe Fava, a um, zoo and aquarium consultant, and I work at Dolphins Hospital Mallory's Fonder, where um, I take care of the dolphins there, but we also um, uh, rescue dolphins all the way from Key West to South Miami, so it covers 10,000 square miles. And right now, we are able, National Marine Fisheries Service, which is our governmental agency, will contact us and ask us to assess the animal and go out there. And if the animal is injured and needs to be rehabilitated, uh, the closest place is Orlando right now. So by the time we actually take them to Orlando, um, sometimes the animals can be very stressed and actually uh, not make the trip. So we really want to build a marine mammal rehabilitation hospital and teaching center for our students. And uh, we just want to get the word out there and, and start helping build this fundraiser. MMR is the only marine mammal rescue and rehabilitation facility in 10,000 miles of South Florida. Whales and dolphins wash up on the Florida coast each year. Many of them are sick, injured, entangled, and physically compromised. CPMMR intervenes on their behalf to bring them back to health and return them to the wild. When a call comes in from National Marine Fisheries Service, we mobilize this unit right away at Deep MMR. Doc and I jump in with a team of experts. We go out, we evaluate the situation, and in one particular instance, we had a group of rough-toothed dolphins that were nine miles offshore. We evaluated them out there, decided that they needed long-term care. We brought them back on boats, loaded them into this van. And if an animal is not healthy enough for an immediate return to the wild, we must ask other Florida marine mammal facilities to see if they have space for that animal. Many times we are turned down. Once in the van, out of the sun and out of the elements, we could keep the animals wet and cool. We contacted National Marine Fisheries Service to see if there were any available open long-term rehabilitation pools and everyone was occupied. If you have an animal already in rehabilitation, you cannot bring another animal in until they've been virally cleared. DPMMR relies on our small team of specially trained personnel to respond to these events. Without a place to go, these animals must be euthanized per the rules of National Marine Fisheries Service. There is no other choice than euthanasia without a permanent rehab facility. DBMR needs to acquire this unique parcel of waterfront property to fulfill the significant mission. It will serve as the ecological and teaching hospital while they recover and eventually will be released back into the ocean. This hospital could serve as a permanent home for animals deemed non-releasable. Our emergent goal is to acquire this property so that we can reinstate the proper licensing for long-term marine mammal rehabilitation. This is the area for natural recovery, where we can easily egress the animals. These animals are counting on you. We thank you for your support. Two Dads and Daughters, Season 2, Episode 7, here in Key Largo, Florida, uh, raising money for a great cause. And Lovey, you had a great time today. We're going to talk a little yeah. bit about that. And I want to introduce Dr. Joanna Fava and her mother, Dr. Pestano. And uh, welcome to the show. And thank glad, you for Thank you so us. much for such a great cause we're involved in. I want to just uh, tell the viewers just a little bit about Animal Necessity been around a long time so why don't you talk a little bit about that and sure. we'll get into our fundraiser yeah thank you so animal necessity has been around for about now 15 years um, it actually stemmed off from my mother's uh, side of the vision on the human side so the human side her research has been now 40 years um, in the making she's an orthomolecular medicine specialist and I've gotten my knowledge from you know the human side and then we brought it to marine and zoo animals and then to domestic animals it's kind of an interesting take on that yep. And we were there today doing this, uh, so we're doing this uh, fundraiser for DP MMR, Dolphin Plus Marine Mammal Responder. Okay. Talk a little bit about start? what started that yeah. and how we got here today. Sure. Um, I do want to just mention that um, Animal Necessity is a supplement company, so we do holistic supplements for not only humans, uh, but the zoo and aquarium side as well. And we were at Dolphins Plus Marine Mammal Responder, which is a non-for-profit, and we rescue animals in five, in, sorry, in 10,000 square miles all the way from Key West to South Miami. And right now, the 
need is that we want to build a marine mammal hospital and teaching facility on the property. We were there today and we're, in, we're really in an urgent need to try to get funding to actually build this hospital. Yeah, we have clips of an incredible tour we did today at the facility, so we're going to show that in a few minutes. But I also want to talk about the great dolphin swim that we did earlier, meeting seven Atlantic bottlenose dolphins, and we had uh, Bob and yeah, we had a few other ones. Yeah, they were really Jessica cool. Jessica and Dingaling. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That cool. seven of them, <laughs> so right? Funny so funny names. But you know, one thing I want to bring up is the uh, special relationship that dolphins have with kids on the spectrum with special needs. And I mean, Kelly, you were fascinated by these. Uh, we've done the Atlantis uh, one that we've done a couple times, and just the relationship between dolphins, how smart they are, and the interaction creates a great sensory experience. And I think you've had some uh, history and background with that as well. So if you want to talk a little bit about that. Yes. Uh, well, my name is Dr. Pestano. And for 40 years, uh, studying uh, plants and in, in Amazon, Germany, and different universities here in the uh, US. Um, my experience in orthomolecular um, uh, is giving me the expertise to help people like uh, um, to has a difficult, like a uh, Down syndrome, uh, hyperactivity children, and uh, autistic uh, children. Uh, to me, um, it's very important today to say that for 40 years studying um, the autism, um, no mention, um, a little bit. Um, 10 years now, um, it's more high the Down syndrome. I mean, it's so important that people know really help uh, these children uh, to be in the world. Um, I study a lot in nutrition. I think that nutrition is the key uh, that helps the children to uh, really have the equilibrium that he needed for life. Uh, a lot of studies in the, in the, in, in the institute, uh, in the flora, um, give to us the opportunity to learn it, so important is the nutrition. That um, is in the relation between the brain and the stomach is very connected. connected. And it's yeah. so important that people know uh, you can help uh, your children. See, a lot of fathers see me today, they so simple uh, because you know the children um, do like too much food and uh, has a little problem in the relation with food. But uh, soon you give a food correct, the children know yes. inside that you give the correct food. For almost now 40 years, but really 20 years, I have the protocol to help. And I only focus really, really in the flora. Uh, a lot of clinical studies doing the flora with children and finding a lot of bacteria, dead bacteria. And this bacteria really what have a toxic to the body. And that's feel that, that something is between these bacteria and the gut, you know, to put it, the children very active, hungry, and that they are not, sometimes we get, uh, that's my experience. Uh, that uh, did it for 20 years in the field. I mean, dolphin-assisted therapy has been around for a long time. I've seen a lot of different uh, programs. And one thing, as a disclaimer, is that it's not designed to cure autism or Down syndrome. It really creates this great sensory experience for children and adults, for that matter. And I think the benefits are tremendous. And I think, obviously, the supplements and a lot of things you're doing. And I think it's all I, what we call like adjunctive supplement you know, yep. support. We don't say ever treat, cure. Yeah. But it's adjunctive to what I think the doctor important the understanding that uh, the probiotic is the one key for the children. Uh, you know, uh, it's really hard because uh, when the, you focus in clinical study, in all products uh, we have, like animals and humans, has clinical study in the back. And each element has clinical study. But the more important is to see the larger research. Uh, that really already know um, the doctors know that, but it's not informed to the public. And yep. uh, thank you very much because you can help a lot of children. Absolutely. And the mission of DPMMR is really connect to protect. And I think, you know, the, the, what we learned today is that these dolphins, these poor dolphins, when they're wounded, they will be euthanized without this. So talk a little bit about the need that we have to get this facility funded and operational to save 
these these dolphins. beautiful creatures. Yeah, so I personally have uh, had to euthanize two rough tooth dolphins and these animals weigh around 300 pounds. So to have this animal in front of me and actually have to euthanize, I've never even touched a rough tooth dolphin. Uh, a lot of the work that we do where we are um, taking samples with the animals under human care, that's how we learn from those animals to be able to bring that medicine to animals that we bring in from the wild or else we would not know how to do that. Um, and I just, I don't want to ever euthanize another animal when we can do it better. We can rehabilitate here. We need to, you know, make a hospital here and just, you know, thank you so much for your help and getting the word out there because it's really needed and we're in an urgent, urgent need for it. Yeah, I mean, some research and training and getting this really uh, bigger on a, uh, and that's why the fundraising is so critical. The tour we did today, I think, demonstrates that this is, uh, time is of the essence. Otherwise, this is really going to be very bad for dolphins and I think uh, what you guys are doing is phenomenal. You've been working with dolphins for how many years? Talk about how cool that, that's the coolest yeah. job I've ever seen. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> so I, you know, it's it's difficult with veterinarian medicine. We don't learn about um, aquatics uh, or zoo animals. So it's four years of vet school. After the four years, it's usually an internship for about uh, one year and then it's a residency for about three years. And then I actually have a PhD in marine mammal ophthalmology. So I've been studying, I think I just got out of school like, you know, a few years ago and I'm still researching and studying these animals are so unique, they're so specialized, and uh, it's just an honor to work with them, and it's an honor to save them, you know, when they're injured. So we, we just, you know, we're in dire need of this hospital, and uh, we just hope that, you know, you, 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 you can help us and get the word. Out. Let's talk about how you connected with my good friend, uh, Brett Raymer, obviously from the show the, uh, on Animal Planet Tanked, and how that relationship came to be. So that's, how, that's how I got involved in this, was through Brett. Yeah. But, uh, you reached out, obviously Brett came down here. Talk a little bit about Yeah, and thank you happened. to you and Brett, because together, you know, you guys have contacted us, other fundraisers, and just trying to get the word more and more out there. Um, Brett, it's funny, he's, he's actually uh, through a kind of, you know, very close, almost family friend, you know, we met, we met Brett, actually, he just, uh, I wrote to him saying that, you know, I, I work with uh, marine mammals and supplements and, you know, can I possibly get a tour, can I meet you, and he wrote right back, and so, uh, you know, it's kind of that, that nice uh, um, a relationship that, you know, whether you're, you're famous or you're fundraising or whatever you're doing, you're always open to actually meet somebody, and if I didn't meet Brett, I wouldn't have met you, and you know we it's wouldn't even be Because we're from Brooklyn, that's what it is. It's the Brooklyn thing with me and Brett that I gotta say. We're just like that. You can reach out. We're just always, uh, yeah. no, but that's yeah. how, that's the kind of guy Brett is, and Brett and Melinda are doing a great job and getting the word out too. And they are. A lot of their film, yeah. production, editing, and just really raising this to another level, raising and bringing the A game, which yes. we can talk about with Giant Damon in a few minutes. But uh, that's really exciting. And yeah. just uh, so in terms of goals and short-term goals, is we need to raise fundraise. Yeah. At least get a two million dollars. Uh, yes. We're looking to get this uh, done quickly yes. and uh, really mobilize efforts to get this done, so we can purchase that property, which we're going to show a few clips from today. So yes, we're also, uh, something very very important: uh, the relationship between uh, the children, like uh, very important with dolphins. Yes, when you see a children who come in, only focus to dolphins is like this. Yep. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and that's why it's really needed to help. To the, you know, we do. We, 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 we can do it. Well, we Kelly, wanna, talk, yeah. yeah. I mean, Kelly, talk a little bit about uh, the dolphin experience today and what you. Uh, I mean, you've obviously this is your second time with dolphins. We had Jill back in 2014, but I mean, today, just what was what was the coolest thing about the dolphin experience and touching them? Just it was pretty cool, right? Yeah, watching them interact with. How they interact with the humans and their different behaviors. Uh, they wave and they give them signals. I mean, it's really cool to see that how smart these creatures are. I think that's really what uh, amazed me is that you can kind of give them instructions and they'll respond and they really feel what we're feeling. So yeah. I think that's their brain a great thing. is the size of a human brain. So yeah. they they connect when they're looking at you. There's something there that's going on. You know, it's not. It's kind of like you know, it, it's not just an animal not really interpreting and analyzing. It's analyzing. So, yeah, well, yeah. this was such a great experience, and we're going to stay Thank so you. plugged in with dads and daughters to this effort because I'm personally involved in this. Thank and you so much. we are going to we can do a lot of work with this with uh, this crew over the next uh, year, and hopefully we'll have a great success story to share in this show. So thanks Thank again for guys. hosting us, Thank and we love to be. We may even be down in Key Largo full time. You never know. You're invited but, uh, anytime. <laughs> you and Kelly, anytime. All right, great All right, stuff. Take care. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank bye bye. <laughs> Dads and daughters uh, here with my boy Brett Raymer and Kelly. You had a fun time. We did swimming with the dolphins today. And uh, let's give you a little background. I've known this dude since 1985, I think 36 years. Uh, 
growing up in Brooklyn, right? And uh, obviously, this guy went to Surprise Lake Camp and he played football at Lincoln High School against my school, Midwood. A good rivalry there. But, so we got a lot of history there. And then Brett went on to, uh, everybody knows him from the TV show Tanked, 15 seasons on Animal Planet. And uh, Brett, give us a little background on how you got from your up upbringing in Brooklyn, got involved sure. with the uh, Tanked show and all that. So we moved to Vegas in 94. Uh, and uh, left New York. And uh, when we got out there, my sister got married to her husband, Wade, and Wade became my business partner. And uh, we started ATM in 1997. And then in about 2009, I decided to uh, write a show. And everybody used to laugh at me. It was like the big family joke. And uh, so I wrote the show Tank and uh, shopped it and filmed it. It took me three years, a lot of hard work. And uh, here we are today. Uh, we got picked up in 2011. Uh, we went off the air in 2019. And uh, in eight years, like Mike said, we shot 156 episodes and it was uh, just a lot of fun. Talk about the whole uh, Brooklyn work ethic and hustle that had to go into making that happen. It's reality shows so many projects out there and I know a lot of stuff behind the scenes. You were on camera, but you were involved a lot behind the camera, which you are now with this DPMMR project, which yeah. we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah, uh, so, you know, uh, definitely got to use a lot of hustle, uh, you know, in the film game, uh, especially uh, they just, you never stop, you know. So the bottom line is you can never take no for an answer. You just got to keep doing what you're doing, believe in what you do, and that's the Brooklyn way, you know. So uh, I'm working hard, and like Mike said, I work for a company called Animal Necessity right now. I do their video production, and they're uh, really here for a great cause. Uh, they're raising money to help... Uh, 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 DMM, what is the initial? DP, 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 MMR, Dolphin Plus Marine yes. Mammal uh, rescue. Responder. Responder Rescue. Yep. And uh, these guys are uh, building a property. They have a property that they're trying to acquire to uh, rehab dolphins. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, cool stuff. And uh, Brett, who was your, so on Tanked, we got to ask this question. I'm sure you get asked a lot. Who was your favorite celebrity guests? I know a guy named Tracy Morgan who. Yeah, Tracy was one of my favorites. Uh, <laughs> Shaq was one of my yeah. favorites. Come down here, check it out. Yes! Totally exceeded my expectations, man. Hey, Tim, you are number one. Thank you, baby. There we go. You dudes take it to 10. Y'all take it to 10. This is crazy. This is a joy right here in my own home. And I have these creatures from the sea in my own home now. All those weeks on tour, man, and I come back and I have this in my house. You guys are the best. So Tracy Morgan talked about, so he is going to be at my uh, fight I'm having with Jerry Cooney for YCS Fight Night, and Tracy's a huge boxing fan. My brother, I know you've done a lot of stuff, work with him. So oh, yeah. you think he's going to cheer for Jerry Cooney or Mike Dempsey? I don't know. I mean, I got the New York roots, and well, Tracy's so does Jerry. Tracy's got the New York, the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn roots. I know Tracy's a Brooklyn so. guy, yes, so he is. You gotta go I with think Dempsey. Tracy's going to go with my boy Dempsey. I hope so. So uh, good stuff. And talk about, again, what your future goals are with this great, I'm so proud to be helping Brett and Dr. Joe and Joe Favas, everybody involved with this Dolph DPMMR fundraiser, which we're doing with Animal Necessity. And just, you know, Brett, we're saying today, I've seen this guy more times in the last few months than we saw in a couple of years. This pandemic killed us. We're making up for lost time. That's right. And what do you think now and the goals going into 2021 as we're heading to normalcy, we hope? Yeah. And, uh, a lot of goals in 2021. You know, one of the ones is uh, helping Animal Necessity achieve their goal, which is to raise two and a half million dollars to donate a uh, piece of property uh, for a dolphin rehab facility. So hopefully 2021 is going to be a lot better than 2020. So well, shout out to his awesome girlfriend, Melinda Sue. She has done phenomenal with her behind the scenes work and she always takes a back seat, but she really should be in the front seat because she's done incredible work from the very beginning with this dolphin fundraiser and just in general. And she's a, a lovely woman and Fred, you're very blessed, my man. Well, thank you. We're excited to, uh, you know, having us on the show thank you again uh like i said anytime you want us back we love it well, the first show you were on our first show with, with johnny damon and we had irish mickey ward you saw a few weeks ago so irish mickey's uh, still training me and uh i've ate a lot the last couple of days so i hope to burn huh. off some of the calories but uh vegas and now we're in the keys so we're having a great time so uh thanks and uh we're gonna have some more episodes to come on dp mmr
Okay, back to dads and daughters. We're here with uh, Johnny Damon, a good friend here, Kelly. Uh, we did a Dolphin swim today. What was your experience, Johnny, with this great uh, organization today, DPMMR? Oh, it was absolutely amazing. Who gets to swim with dolphins? We did, and it was absolutely amazing. My kids had the best time. Baby Dash, and, right, Kelly? Yeah. <laughs> and the memories that they had today, it's going to last for a very long time, and we are so excited to be a part. Um, helping this uh, go through, you know, we love dolphin, we love the environment, and we want to make sure that our sea animals can continue and live happily and healthy, and this is exactly the reason why we are here. Well, Johnny's all about philanthropy, and Johnny, you have supported a lot of great organizations. Obviously, your own foundation, Johnny Damon Foundation. We had a great event last month, and uh, Wounded Warrior, I think that comes back yeah. to your dad. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I was the first athlete spokesperson for the Wounded Warrior Project, and we were able to build two homes for Wounded Warriors in Winter Garden, Florida, and, you know, Anything military, I am for, and I am always there, willing to help out, and just, there's a lot of people in need of help, and that's exactly why I help, and. You continue to help. St. Jude, St. Jude's yeah. over the years, through uh, Curativity, and some of the great work that Eric Trump, and I mean, we have uh, done a lot of fundraising all around the country, but his foundation, been around for a lot of years. I think you established it about 15 years ago and it's still going strong, doing a lot of great work in Central Florida to help at-risk youth and uh, some of the things, some of the great programs. So, uh, but your background, Johnny, you obviously were like an army brat growing up. Talk a little bit about how you, I think you grew up, you were born in Kansas and then you went, you lived in Okinawa, which I love the Karate Kid, uh, <laughs> the sequel, right? So we got, you didn't do the, yeah. So, uh, and then you lived in West Germany, but then you settled obviously preschool age around in Orlando know you still live there obviously but talk a little bit about being an army brat and how you kind of got that example from your dad yeah well it was absolutely fantastic I knew how to live on the move kind of like what I did when I played major league baseball yeah. and I was used to it I enjoyed it I enjoy what this great earth has to offer and you know another reason why we are here for the sea animals for the dolphins and why we want to continue to help and just bring positivity to this world that unfortunately has lost the uh, positive thinking. We need to bring it back and we need to make sure we take care of um, things that can't take care of themselves and that's why uh, you know, helping out this uh, organization is going to be uh, very key and crucial to how our environment is going to be in a year from now, yep. five years from now. I had my kids go outside and pick up trash that was out on the beach and they brought back so much <laughs> stuff today and it's, it's horrible and we all need to be better. Johnny Damon needs to be better, the Dempseys need to be yes, bit better and everybody needs to be better to help clean up the environment and do what you can do and try to do more. Well, changing topics, you know, I'm a football guy and I had a lot of concussions in my career. I heard a story that, fun fact, that you got a concussion from Warren Sapp, a good buddy of mine as well. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, talk a little bit about that. Well, that's why he was a football player and I decided to go play baseball. I mean, it, common sense. I mean, Warren Sapp was the number one tight end in the country coming out of um, high school, Apopka High School, and, you know, He's the reason why I felt like I had to quit football. So thank you, Warren Sapp, for making me a baseball legend. <laughs> well, we're all connected because Warren was his teammate of Dwayne Johnson, who I had the experience uh, playing football with back in 1994, 95, up in uh, CFL days. So um, great stuff there. And I want to talk a little bit also about, we have Brett Raymer with us this weekend. And obviously Brett filled the tank in your house, which I've been, had the privilege of seeing. He crazy broke some uh, holes in your wall, or I think, I don't know, it was part of the episode. Episode, but talk a little bit about that cool tank that you have uh, from Mr. Raymer. Yeah, well, we actually got two fish tanks, two. and Brett and Wade were absolutely fantastic. <laughs> they um, came into the house. They, you know, made some holes in some walls that I wasn't too happy about, but we were able to talk through it yep. and figure things out. And I have two incredible fish tanks, and you know, Brett 
really didn't do anything on that job. We were like, playing, we were bowling, we were, you know, swimming. So, yeah. Well, funny. We were going to show a cool clip from that episode back in 2016 with uh, Johnny and Brett. Yeah. Gender and it, reveal, baby. Gender reveal, the cool episode. So, check this one out. Here's the fun room. Oh, you weren't kidding fun. Wow. Oh. Wow. And Look, big. Ball, slot machines. Is that a bowling alley? That's yes. a bowling alley. Let me tell you something, that's amazing. I can't believe it. I'm jealous. And this is our favorite that decor is. of all the house, I think. Like the most fun for. Yeah, I mean, we have graffiti wow. on the walls. Look at the graffiti. All the names of our kids, our signs. I'm a Scorpio. We got a Taurus. It's like a New York City subway car. Absolutely. You know, that's pretty Dude, cool. Dude, we can, we can actually do that in the tank. We can do graffiti stuff in the tank. Ooh. We'll match the yeah, tank. we That'd can definitely cool. incorporate some, whatever we do, we can incorporate some kind of graffiti somehow into the aquarium. Absolutely. You know, awesome. definitely Very do cool. something. But this would be another spot that would also be a great place for, for, for an aquarium. Do you guys hang out with the family up here much, or? Well, normally we bowl at night, and we like to get the kids to bed so, so we can actually have adult time like up more here. More on the weekend. This is like the adult playground. Yes, yeah, yeah. But absolutely. <laughs> An aquarium's for the whole family. You want to put it where everybody's going to sit and relax, they can enjoy it. You don't want to put it in a room that you're not there all the time. I, I, I definitely sense. agree. Where do yeah. you guys all hang out? Well, we hang out in the family room. Right? Yeah, the living room, kitchen. That's Why don't we go right. check that out? Oh, hold right. on, hold on, wait, wait, before we go. Can we bowl a frame, maybe? Like, oh, if, if absolutely. I, if maybe me against you, and if I win, I get to see the rings? Oh. I mean, why not? Make sure you use Nitro. What's that, his nickname? Yep. Go Nitro. What's your name? My nickname? Yeah. Be Love. Be All Love. Right. Nitro. Ah, ah. That's my nickname. Has it not been? Is that the truth? I never heard it. It's been my nickname. There it is. I got a lot of love to give. Good luck. I know, good luck. How's the alley? Is it waxy? Is it straight? What do we got going on? You see, home field No advantage. excuses, B. <laughs> You better knock the rest down if you want to see those rings. I'm motivated. Don't you worry about it. Don't let me down. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, there's a hook on there, boy. That's nice. That's nice. That's real nice. All right, Johnny, let's go. Let's see what you got. You embarrass me. You got a gutter. Terrible. Things aren't looking good for you, Pinhead. Oh, you're never going to see those rings. Maybe Johnny isn't that good at bowling. He's got a bowling alley in this house, dude. <laughs> Better than zero. Here it goes. <laughs> that's true. Oh. Strike, baby! Nice! No, that's not a strike. That means he knocked them all down. He only got nine. He's got four more than you. Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to right. throw the other one. All right, so you know what I say we do? I said we <laughs> Exactly. A well, funny other fun fact, commonality between me and Johnny is I had started growing up, and I think you had started growing up as well. And we I still now, do. now we can't stop talking. Now, <laughs> and now our spouses say you guys got to shut up. But it's kind of funny. Talk a little bit about this and the challenges. I know I had that. I was very quiet, believe it or not. I was quiet as a as a youngster, and now I can't. Like I said, I, you can't shut me up. <laughs> yeah, I had a big stutter, and what helped me out was music and John Denver's Country Road was the song that helped me on my path to become a national spokesperson. And, you know, I do stutter at times when I hear unnecessary noise sometimes, if a lot of people are talking, but, you know, I try to uh, work it out and I figure it out. And I've been on some associations talking about stuttering and trying to teach people down, they need to know what they have to talk about, and because of that, I feel like I've helped so many people along the way as well. We have a lot of people, I know Kelly, you know, obviously the relationship you've had with Kelly over the years is uh, really introduced through your foundation, through the golf event, Tim Tebow, our buddy Tim Tebow's event, and uh, talk a little bit about, I mean, how you interact with Kelly, like I said, this guy is just magic when he's around my daughter, and he's part of the family, we call you Uncle Johnny for a reason, so... Uh, Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, it's all about family. It's all about um, making those connections that can benefit everybody's lives. And I feel like um, when I bring to the Dempsey's, to Kelly, to Mike, to their entire family, that you know, this is something that's going to go on forever. We're going to always be there for each other. We're going to pitch in. We're going to do what we can. And you can't talk. 
this is absolutely amazing. You brought up Tim Tebow, and yeah. what an amazing oh, human being that guy is. I mean, he could run for governor, he could run for president, and he would win hands down because he is doesn't that get incredible. the credit that he deserves. No. I mean, Tim is a birth mate to his sport, yes. and uh, you know, I, I think what Tim has done has been amazing. Um, love the Tim Tebow Foundation, thank the Shine from the Kelly's been privileged to be part of, right, Kelly? I mean, that's one of your. Tim is like Johnny, one of those magical people. You meet him, he becomes a friend for life, and uh, really amazing. And Johnny, you're uh, right. Yeah. yeah, I'm a great person. Yes. Tim Tebow <laughs> is like unbelievable, and just Who's the drive you? that he has and the passion that he, um, every time he speaks, he's like the captain of everybody. That's what Tim Tebow is. He's Captain America. You know, he's amazing. Speaking of amazing people, you Sometimes uh, we got all the names, but uh, why all the D's? <laughs> that was Michelle. You know, right. she wanted um, double D's for double D's. everybody. All right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we love it. We love our family life. We love the fact that uh, got to win two championships with her, and yes, she was did. the inspiration and the person that said, "You can do it. Um, keep competing." She won us the World yes. Series in 2009. Yeah. So yeah. Well, uh, she told me, yeah. "Let's go, let's go do it. Like, yeah. Why not?" Like yes. the Yankees are the Yankees and the Pit Stripes. You will remember forever. So I did bring it back to you, and then we well, took care of business. Everyone's a true baseball fan knows this man was 231 hits uh, short of 3,000 when he had probably three or four good years left. You know that story. So, but you're all favor on and off the field, and I think you know your compliments are off the field. He won a great award two years ago. Um, in November of 2018, I believe it was, or 2019. Just amazing that you're getting acknowledged for the philanthropy that you do because people have to know that side of Johnny Damon, not just on the field, but off the field. And you're an inspiration to us. And I think you continue to inspire with all the great work you do, Johnny. And uh, I'm so glad to have you as a friend, uh, role model, and uh, just keep doing what you're doing. I will do that, Mike. And, uh, and a great dad, too, by the way. This is a dad's and daughter show like you are. Now, you got Dash, but the other. Yeah. Other five Michelle old girls and talk about a little bit about the last part was about being a girl dad. Yeah, I, it's absolutely amazing. You know, the father daughter dance at school every year is fantastic because I got five beautiful girls on my um, side. Your so, yeah, <laughs> so, fully loaded. And then you know, kids start.
dads and daughters. Uh, we had a great time on the dolphin swim, and we got our little doggy friends here. Who are your doggy friends? Kelly, introduce Lena them. Lena and Jilly. Lena and Jilly, very silly dogs. We've had a great weekend with them. So we're going to show you a little clip of our cool dolphin swim that we did earlier with uh, thanks to DPMMR, everybody there, Art, uh, Dr. Joe, and we had Giant Damon and the family with us, and... Had a cool time, right, Kelly? Yeah. Got to meet some cool, cool dolphins. And uh, yeah, and we ha actually had a tour as well. We're going to show you that in a little bit as well. So here's the clips. Getting ready, Lubby, for our dolphin swim with uh, DP, MMR, Animal Necessity. Great crew here today. And the Damon family, especially our buddy. We're going to be doing dolphin swim with Dash. Dash the Flash. Yeah. Is he Dash the Flash? Yeah. Or he's Dash the Flash. So we're going to have a good time. And... Uh, Learn a lot about these marine mammals. Hey, Dash, what do you think? Say about dolphins. You like dolphins? What do you like about dolphins? Yeah, they're cute, right? Okay, Dash the Flash, Damon. Coming right back at you. Right? Say DPMMR. Okay, close enough. Oh, they call her first for any type of stranding that goes on. So we cover all the way from Key West to South Miami. Uh, 10,000 square miles, and so if a, um, a dolphin or a whale, which they're categorized as what's called a cetacean, uh, comes up to shore, National Marine Fisheries Service will contact us. They're the government agency, and then we go and we assess and we see, you know, we give them codes, various codes, depending on, on how injured they are, and if we feel that they can be rehabilitated, um, we contact Orlando, one of the facilities there, and they basically. Um, are the only ones right now that we're contacting because uh, due to Corona, there's obviously even more restrictions um, and they're low staffing. So I personally have had to euthanize two rough tooth dolphins. I don't know if you guys have ever even seen a rough tooth dolphin. You guys know what a rough tooth dolphin is by chance? No? So they have like a really long rostrum, right? That's what comes out. And they're, um, and they're really kind of like Kind of like irregularly um, feeling, right? They, they, and I've never even felt one. And uh, yes. I mean. Hey, right oh, I don't know if I remember everybody. This is Dash. Baby Dash. Dash. Dash, say hi. I met Dash on the phone. Dash, Drianna, introduce yourself. Drianna. What's your say name, hi. Drianna? Say hi. No. <laughs> okay, so you're She's finally four. quiet. She's five. He's four. She's four. We have and this is Lydia. her buddy, her little BFF, right? Lydia, Lydia and Lydia's, Lydia's brother. brother. Gabriel. Gabriel. And then this one's Danica. Danica, hi. Christina looks like our kid, but she's just not our kid. Okay. But she helps with our kid. <laughs> and then Josh and Delia are twins. Okay. And then Devin's the oldest. She's the 14th. Yeah. And then Brittany. Brittany. And she wants to show you what she has with her. Oh my god. <laughs> You guys excited for your dolphin swim? What do you think? Yeah. All right. You excited? Where are we going? Yeah. So you guys yeah, get in here. Yeah. You excited for your dolphin swim? Aww. Uh oh. <laughs> He's taking the video. So Kayla here is going to show you. You're going to meet her today um, when you swim. And she's going to show you a little bit about kind of cool how we actually give vitamins to our fish. Yeah, so when we get um, all the vitamins and supplements that they need to be able to provide the dolphins, uh, what we do and how we give it to them, they can't, we can't just pop it in their mouth and they swallow it like we do with some water. Uh, so the way we're able to give it to our dolphins is through a fish. So what we do is we take our pretty little pinky fingers, we shove it down into the gill of the dolphin. Uh, so that way we can kind of make a little pocket for those pills to go into. Uh, from there, we take all those vitamins and supplements and push it right down into that little pocket. Dolphins have no idea what they're getting. <laughs> and then from there, we just tear that pet pin off. That lets all the trainers know who's feeding that dolphin that that fish has those vitamins and supplements in it, and that's the perfect way to be able to provide that to our dolphin. Did you get that, Johnny? I got it. You yeah. do the next one? Pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Johnny, try to stuff one? You okay. You Johnny, want you want it? You want to try to stuff more out there? Oh, yeah, show them how. Here, you get one. You got to get your hands fishy. Okay, you get one. So it's the skill, right? Yep, so you take your pinky finger and make a little pocket down in there. Okay. And then you put the vitamin. I'm making a little pocket right here. Yeah, and then you put the little bit right down in there. 
Very good. Look at that, you're a trainer already. <laughs> all right, do I put more? Oh, oh that's it. We're going to try to stuff the whole fish in there with okay. these. All right. Yeah, we, but we can get in. Sometimes you got to do a lot. We call it the medfish. That's the fish that has usually more of the actual medicines because the medicines need to come first even before the vitamins. So. This is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if we have to do it, okay, you got to stick it right, stick right there. in there. Okay, hold okay. on. All right, do it one at a time. Lydia, you want Okay. All right. Stick it down. Oh, that's not me. That's not me. All right, now we have kind of destroyed this. Yeah, well, that one we won't be using. It's just a walk up there. Yep, there you go. So, how many people put pills in the original? Just watch. Maybe I'd like to come in. I'll just hold her here. Come here, let me hold you here. I'm going to hold you right here. Jump. Uh, blow hole. It's kind of like our nose. 
even though dolphins can't smell at all. Can you do me a favor, Lydia? Can you touch right there with one finger? Just touch right there. All right. Uh, I'll find real quick. Okay. Now, in just a few minutes, we have to introduce everybody else to the dolphins next door. So we're going to almost have to say goodbye, but we're going to do a couple more.
this part of Florida, you're allowed to put your dock up to 300 feet out. So we're legally allowed to put pilings out and fence it off and have shade structures and docks and floating docks. That's where we would transition animals to after ICU. And if it looked like they were going to be releasable, we would then transition them to the canal, which is on this side. This property also owns six feet of the property on the hotel on the inner side. And because the canal is man-made, the canal comes with it. You're legally, it's not a navigable waterway. You're allowed to fence it off. And that's where we um, utilize the area for preconditioning, pre-release conditioning of animals. We also have enough space here to be able to house animals permanently if the National Marine Fishery Service deems them non-releasable. So you guys know if we go out and attend to uh, an animal, if they're, they're entangled or they're ill or they've been bit by a shark, and we bring them back here and we rehabilitate them, it's the National Marine Fishery Service that steps in and evaluates that animal to determine releasability. So I don't get to say, oh, I like this one, it's cute, let's keep it. It doesn't work that way. The, the federal government steps in and says there's a certain set of criteria for non-releasability. If you're under two years old and your mother is gone or, or dead, you're not gonna survive on your own, you're non-releasable. If you're deaf, because you see, hunt, and forage using sound, you're non-releasable. If you're blind, you're non-releasable. And if you're physically impaired to the point where you need daily medication, you're not releasable. So those are the criteria. We live in a teaching hospital, uh, which would be the first of its kind for marine mammals. Yeah, right now there is, so University of Miami, the Rosen, Rosenseal School of Marine, marine Science, um, they're, you know, they, they teach uh, marine biology, but this would be not only marine biology, but brain veterinarians and their science to teach, you know, all sorts of classes of children. If we acquired this property and put about $50,000 into portable trailers for a fish kitchen, small staff room. Uh, I already have the pop-up pools. I already have the fencing for out here. Uh, we need a necropsy lab, uh, a freezer, and a fish kitchen. Uh, we would be allowed to reopen almost immediately as a full rehabilitation center instead of an ambulance service, which is what we currently are. We're closing out our Dads and Daughters episode seven for season two. And uh, to donate to this great cause, it's animalnecessity.com, and you can see the fundraiser on there. And uh, we're also going to have uh, next week, we are joined by a special friend, Fred Gutenberg, orange ribbons for Jamie, and he lost his daughter, Jamie, in the Parkland shooting. We're looking forward to a great show next Sunday night at 6 p.m., and uh, thanks for joining tonight.